Not only do temperatures worldwide go up by a few critical degrees, oxygen levels start going down. The Lystrosaurus and Gorgons have no idea what's happening to them. But suddenly, it's getting harder and harder to breathe. Their primitive reptilian respiratory systems simply aren't equipped to handle the thinning air. The hunter and hunted now share the same struggle to survive. Streamlined and cold-blooded, Coelophysis was a terrifying miniature version of what was to come. With its innovative jaw, its gashing claw, and its heightened cunning and speed, it had all the makings of a world-class killer. In a hundred million years, this tiny creature from the dawn of the dinosaurs would leave its legacy to the largest predators ever to walk the earth. Dilophosaurus is still a primitive dinosaur. In the future, carnivores will have three fingers instead of four. Their heads will grow larger, their bodies more massive, and the crest will disappear. When there is plenty of food, herbivores can be very tolerant of each other. As the Mataburosaurus pluck and tear at the podocarp trees, the Lielanosaurus scamper among them, gathering up the red fruit that gets scattered on the ground. Although a risky harvest, the clan must take every opportunity the forest offers because time is running out. So I envision a, a hunt of, of T-Rex. Let's say this young female with chicks to feed. She's out searching with those, those forwardly facing eyes, searching the landscape for a triceratop she can cut out from the herd. like Dromaeosaurus have fairly complex brains for a dinosaur. What makes them such efficient killers is that they have the ability to react to a situation in relatively short order. Launching a simultaneous attack is a very effective maneuver when attacking something as big as Edmontosaurus. The Edmontosaurus skin was up to three inches thick and was covered with small round armor-like calluses. Cal Orco is an important site because it has the largest number of dinosaur footprints in the world. The limestone wall reveals a thriving dinosaur population. With over 250 trackways and thousands of footprints, it brings to light the era just before the extinction of dinosaurs.
500 miles from the crash site, the air temperature now reaches 600 degrees. Hot enough to boil away the water in the dinosaur's skin, which escapes in sudden bursts of steam. The fiery blasts suck every drop of moisture from the vegetation. Anything directly exposed to the blistering heat is simply broiled alive. Just 108 seconds after impact in the Gulf of Mexico, the bright streams of vaporized rock can be seen in the Pacific Northwest. Top roost, a breeding pair of Quetzalcoatlus can see the glow of the fireball high above the horizon, 3,000 miles away. That's how big it is. Since the first one was discovered in 1824, dinosaurs have become one of the most enduring icons of our time. Yep. We're going to find it. There's a dinosaur head buried in the woods. We live in a world that is dinosaur obsessed. As kids, we can't get enough of them. Follow a trail. We gotta go seriously under a log. And if you've got it really bad, you grow up into a paleontologist. Don Lesson was a consultant on Jurassic Park. You're right. What's the matter with the grown-ups who don't love dinosaurs? The most magnificent things that ever lived on the earth? And you're wondering why we love them? I mean, what is your problem? We're looking for a little bit of bone that's sticking out. Because otherwise, how would you know where the fossil is? They were the superlatives. They were the biggest, the heaviest, the meanest, the longest. You name it, dinosaurs were it. Hey, Helen. The reason it's so fascinating for kids, I think, is that they can imagine what it's like to be in that world. We have a hard time imagining what it's like to go to Florida. For little kids, when they're two and three and they're starting to think about the world a little bit, these are monsters. They're real, but they're not under the bed. When I was a kid, I really wanted a dinosaur to ride on. A big sauropod. I thought it would be so much fun to have a sauropod-sized saddle and be able to <laughs> ride on a sauropod. We can get in over here. As a paleontologist, I love digging up the possibility of monsters of my childhood, looking for strange beasts that once roamed where I live now. Well, imagine if dinosaurs were not just curiosities dug up from the ground. 